G'day guys and welcome back to another edition of More Dirt, Less Bitumen. Today we've got something a little bit different for you. Instead of being out on the tracks, we've got a DIY install of a reverse camera and monitor into the patrol. Let's get to it. So here we have all the components of our kit. We've got the camera, the monitor, a variety of mounts and all the wiring looms. But over on the end here we've got a couple of ram mounts because we're going to be doing something a little bit different to mount this up in the vehicle. But now, let's do a test fit, make sure it all runs before we start drilling holes. Done a basic dummy wire up of it all, just to make sure everything works before we go ahead and install it into the vehicle and waste all that time, so. Okay, now the fun starts, or when I start to get really nervous about putting holes into my canopy. But this is where we've got to mount the, uh, mount the camera. So what I've already done is I've checked where my centre mark is. Inside here, I've got a 50 mil channel. So we actually have to bring it down a little bit further. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more measuring. Double check, measure twice, cut once, or in this case, measure twice, drill once. So yeah, we don't end up with a uh, canopy that looks like Swiss cheese. Just like to add, this is seriously nerve wracking. Okay, now that we've got our camera in the correct position, we just have to mount our bracket. Normally people would use a tech screw, but because we spend a fair bit of time off road on corrugations and that type of thing, I've got a couple of little 316 stainless bolts here with uh, a nylock knot on the other side. So I'll have to mark this out, drill them up, and away we go. I've got my bracket in position. All I'm doing now is just marking top and bottom and sides. So then I can remove the camera and drill and fix off that bracket. Okay, so I've got my bracket in position there now. Now it's just a matter of marking where my little holes for my bolts have to go. You can see there I've got to mark at the top because the way that this bracket actually works, those little holes on the side there with the slots, that'll allow my camera to tilt down and get the right angle. that after you've drilled those holes, you just get a slightly larger drill bit, just to take that burr off. Just run it around through your fingers. All nice and smooth. Now that our holes are all drilled, and it's all been cleaned up, just gotta pop our bracket on. Got our little marker at the top there to make sure we know it's going on the right way. These are our little 316 stainless bolts, or 316 washer as well. Put this into position. And we'll head around on the inside and I'll grab my lovely assistant and we'll uh, fix this off and then uh, we can fit the camera back up and start running the cabling. Okay, so we've crawled into the back of the canopy now. I've got Mez on the outside and we're gonna start putting on our little nylocks. And we're using nylocks on these because I just don't want them to rattle loose over the corrugations. Okay, so I've just nipped up the top two there gone on the outside, checked and made sure that the bracket's all nice and level. Now we're just going to nip them up properly, tighten them. Okay, bracket's all done. Time for the wiring. I'm gonna run it through on the inside here, down through the subfloor, run it through behind the drawers, out underneath the vehicle ran up the firewall and uh, in behind the dash. Okay, now with the bracket all fitted off, it's a matter of feeding the wiring through the hole there and then fitting off the grommet and then just feed the wiring through so it's all nice and neat. And then we need to position our camera in our bracket and not forgetting the little cover over the top. There's a couple of little hex head bolts that we have to fit up here. So just locate them in the right spot. And then go around the other side and do the same thing on the other side. Once you've got that in position now, we'll just leave it just tacked off because you can still rotate that depending on what our final angle is going to be. And there's a couple of other little fittings on either side for a couple of little set screws to finalize that position. Okay, now that we've made our way inside the canopy, just a matter of now running the cabling down through across the top there, 
connecting up to our extension lead and of snapping that together. I've already put a grommet around the cable. It's gonna be drilled down in this bottom corner. We're gonna convolute it all. Then we're gonna put some of these sticky back zip tie mount things up in the corner here. Keep the cable all nice and tight along there. Run it through the subfloor and up in behind the dash. Just attaching this cable through now. Just line up the two arrows, push them together, and then thread it together. And then just using this protective little sleeve over the top of the two for a little bit of extra protection. Now we just have to thread this through, then we'll chase it through to the front. Now with that all the way through, a matter of running some convolute around this cable and then sticking it up in there ready to go okay so next up is running some convolute over the uh, cable i've already cut a length to suit so now it's just a matter of feeding it over and i'm just going to leave the joint exposed there it'll just be easier to get to now with that cable covered in conduit we're just going to put a couple of these little zip tie stickies up along the top and along the side to hold that cable in position so it doesn't get caught on stuff in the back of the canopy. Little trick with this one is, use a bit of Sikaflex. So these have a little self-adhesive pad on them. So we pull that little pad off, get our Sikaflex, and we just put a little dob of Sikaflex in the middle. It'll probably squeeze out the side a little bit, but that's okay. A self-adhesive pad will hold it in place while the Sikaflex goes off. We'll just do that to each of them. And the sticker flex just gives that extra little bit of stick when on the on the rough roads. And if you're like me, you'll get sticker flex everywhere. I hate this stuff. But it sticks good. And yep, I've got sticker flex everywhere. So now with them in place, we'll get the zip ties. We'll clean up this sticker flex because it really does go everywhere. And then we'll come back and uh, tie that all up. Righto, with our little tabs already on there, I've preloaded the zip ties. So now it's just a matter of working our way around. Passing those guys off, just leaving a little bit at the end so I can get that grommet in and then cut the convolute to length. And we're done inside. We can move underneath. Okay, so we've got the cable now through to the uh, subfloor here. And now I've just run it down through underneath my drawers. So now I'm just going to be feeding this cable back down through And now that we've got our cabling all the way through to the uh, through to the chassis, it's a matter of grabbing our split convolute now. We'll cover it all up and then run it all the way along the chassis rail, up the firewall and back into the back of the dash. With the cable all now running convolute, it's time to grab your zip ties, head underneath and tie it all up. While I was running the cabling down through along the chassis rail here and following all the existing lines, I've noticed this uh, nice big grommet there that runs just inside uh, underneath my seat. So I've had a bit of an investigate and we are uh, found that it's, we can go up through there and then run in under the, under, the, uh, under the dash from there. So I've got inside here, popped out the trims and found in underneath there. You can see up the back there. That's where that grommet is. So we're going to make a little slice in that grommet, bring that cable through, run a little along here, up through the back there, and then in under the dash. Just so we don't have any issues with any leaks or anything like that down there. Just going to get a blob of good old Sikaflex. Try and work it in around that, around that joint down there. Now that the cable's all been run underneath there, it's just a matter of getting my trims and popping those back on. With all the cabling run through to the back of the dash now, I'm going to turn my attention to the monitor and remove the original mirror and set that up. With the wiring all done up to the dash, now it's a matter of getting in and removing the factory mirror. And because I'm wanting to run a monitor up on the top here, I'm gonna to have to drop some of this hood lining, remove some of these panels to get the cabling and get the wiring and power up there. So first things first, you just have to pop that little cover out of there. And then there's just three screws holding the original 
mirror. I'm actually going to use these original mounting points to mount the ram mount that I'm going to modify. To remove this unit, we just drop down the sunglass holder, which actually holds my stornies. And there's one screw up in the top there. So loosen him off, take him out, and then it's just a matter of putting your fingers in the top there, popping those out. Now there are a couple of wires up in the top here for the lights, but I've already been up here and had a bit of a look around, so I've already disconnected them. So if you're doing it for the first time, just be mindful not to pull down too hard. What I've got to do now, drop out the sun visor so I can actually get down and run down the side and bring a cable through. With the center console removed, now it's a matter of taking the sun visor down. There's just a couple of little screws for that one. And that just falls out. Which then enables you to drop your hood lining. Now we just take off this trim around the door frame, pop him down and out of the road, grab a little screwdriver, pop that in underneath there, pop those couple of clips out. And then get your fingers in. I always hate doing this. I always think I'm gonna break something. And then pop them out. Now you can see there where cabling's already run through from the light. So we're just gonna follow that down with our cable for our monitor. With the bracket all prepared, it's now just a matter of using those original screws straight back into those original holes. And that then provides our mounting point for our ram mount. And that can then twist and swivel whichever way you want the monitor, which will end up attaching off of this ball. But for now, we'll just take that one off and move on to running our cabling down through the back there. Normally these monitors get mounted on the dash, but due to the fact that I'm wanting to go up into my roof, the standard wiring just isn't long enough to get down to the power loom behind the dash. So thankfully, the guys from Safety Dave included an extra meter of cable, which will allow me to run across underneath the hood lining, down the A-pillar, and in behind the dash and pick up power from the loom. There we go, we've run it down through there. We'll bring it out the front following the factory loom. Slide that down there, and then we'll put our trims back on, put our sun visor back on, and then we'll be ready to go back in behind the dash. Now I had to buy a special fitting, or special ball fitting to uh, to suit the back of the, uh, the monitor here. It's got a T-slot in the back there, so thankfully Ram have a heap of different, uh, different mounting solutions. So I've bought one that actually has a little T-slot on the back of it. So now it's just a matter of sliding that in there and then tightening that up. It's got a nylock nut in the top there, so fingers crossed that won't come loose over the corrugations either. So that now attaches to this guy and then that just slides into there. So positioning that where you want, we'll get our cable and we'll run that up through that little hole there. And then it's nearly done up on the top here. We'll replace the overhead console and Bob's your uncle. What I need to do is get this little clip in here, clip him back into there. Hopefully my lights work again now. Woohoo! Then we just need to bring that cable down through the front there, line our little marks up. I won't put the screw up in here at the moment. Leave that till the last. Just remind me if I do forget. Overhead consoles all in place, wires being run across down, run it along the factory loom there, zip tied it up, we'll run it through to the bottom now. All we need to do now is pop our trims in, tap them into position, get our trim clips, pop those little guys in, and grab our door trim. Now all we need to do is pop up our sun visor. Okay, this is all going really well in under the dash now. Things are going crazy in here. Dash is all pulled out, but we found our auxiliary or ignition power. So we're going to just strip back a little bit off the wire, off the end here, wrap that around there. Wrap that around there. Solder that up now, attach our earth, and then Fingers crossed, the monitor will all work. Soldering iron's all hot. We'll just heat that cabling up and melt that through. There we go. Run a bit of the old electrical tape over that. We'll attach our earth, which is just around the back here. I'm just going to put that at the same place as what the 
There's another factory earth there for the radio. Screw this off and cross our fingers. Before we put it all back together, we'll fire this up. And wow, woohoo! We've got a reverse camera installed. You can check it out. Turn the ignition off. Ignition back on, and there it is. Well, now I've got all this mess to clean up, and then we are done. How cool, what a day. Pretty cool this, it's got a menus on the bottom there, you can change the brightness of the screen, change the amount of contrast or lack of contrast. There's Ernie walking in the back there, color. Not too sure what color does. Oh, you can actually change it to black and white. Hue. And yeah, volume. This camera's actually got a uh, microphone in it, so if you're backing up, or if you're in a caravan park, or something like that, or if you've got uh, yeah a, a tight turnaround on a track, if you've got a spotter out the back there, they can uh, talk to you through the uh, through the camera as well. So that's pretty cool. I oh, think yeah, I'll keep that brightness down low, contrast it right, and then we only have the one camera at the moment. So it's only got the one signal. And the last thing we've got to do. take the old plastic cover strip off. Well that's it guys, done and dusted. The install of the camera and the monitor. Let us know what you think below. If there's something I did wrong, or something that you liked, or if you've got a hint or a tip for the next time. Is there more of this sort of stuff you'd like to see? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, remember, more dirt, less bitumen.